Hello and welcome. My name is Quentin Smith, Paradox Interactive's new creative marketing commissar, and this is the second of a two-part series on how to play Hearts of Iron, the card game, this time covering how to play the game itself. So, the first thing you will see in a match is this, the deck selector, in which you will select which of your decks you would like to play with. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You then have to select one of the doctrines in those decks. Now, doctrines are kind of battle plans that determine what you're allowed to attack with. For instance, combined arms here, if you look in that box in the upper left, you'll see two infantry sig sigils and one tank sigil. That means you'll need two infantrymen and one tank to attack with combined arms. The box to the right of that is what your opponent has to defend with. I'm going to select, however, air support because I've got a lot of planes in this deck. The game will then present you with 10 cards uh, randomly chosen from your deck, of which you'll select six to form your starting hand, dragging any unwanted cards onto your deck so they can be reshuffled. At this point in the game, you probably want a lot of factories, which are the green cards, along with uh, any army cards that can be used in the doctrine that you chose. You'll also notice that there are some timers next to my deck and my opponent's deck. That's because this is a head-to-head -head match uh, with a ticket entry cost. So those chest-style timers uh, are designed to facilitate fast play to make sure that uh, nobody spends too much time lollygagging. Okay, right, I'm down to six cards, and the game is afoot! The game will kick off with a draw phase, and in your draw phase, you can discard unwanted cards from your hand by dragging and dropping them into the ominous-looking slot in the corner, the little paper shredder-looking thing, and you can draw new cards if you're below the hand limit of six by clicking on your deck. Seeing as probably you won't have any room to draw cards at this point, you just click on the arrow in the bottom right that means end turn. You can also uh, kill time while your opponent's uh, having his own draw phase by clicking and holding the left mouse on your cards to zoom in on the picture and the card ability. After the draw phase is the arming phase in which you will deploy factories and use those factories to deploy units who will fight and die for you. So those green factory cards you've got, drag and drop them into the lower left hand corner of the screen to increase the points you have available to spend on units which are displayed there. Now it's worth pointing out here that every factory you deploy will cost you an infrastructure point of which you only get three each turn. And infrastructure points are also what you use to draw cards into your hand. So you're going to have to have a bit of a balancing act here. Infrastructure points are displayed where that coloured trowel is just above your factory points. So you've got your factories and now use those points to deploy some units onto the battlefield. And uh, yes, click end turn when you're done. Now what the game's going to do now is because neither myself nor my opponent have anything we can actually fight with, we can't fulfil either of the doctrines we chose, the game will skip straight onto the draw phase. Now, this time I only have two cards out of my maximum hand of six, so I'm going to spend some infrastructure points to draw cards into my hand. If any of those are factories, I won't be able to build them this turn because I've already spent three points. Oh, none of them are factories. That's good. All right, so that's the gist of the game. I'm going to skip straight on to what happens when you can fulfill any of your doctrines. All right, the combat phase. Welcome to the jungle. So if, ooh, ooh, if you ever see that uh, symbol at the top, it just means a card hasn't loaded yet. It does not mean your opponent is prepping some terrifying super weapon. So when it's your turn to act, you will uh, select one of your doctrines and drag it into the slot just there. You'll then select the troops that you are going to send forward to attack with. And finally, your opponent is going to select whether he wants to defend with or not, if he can defend. It's through doctrines going uh, through undefended that you will score victory points that will ultimately win you the game. Uh, however, you can see my opponent here is defending because he's a jerk. So, let me get taken to the battle screen. Now, it's divided into three phases, artillery, battle, and close combat, but you don't need to know those names, really. If you look at a card, you'll simply see that it has three slots at the top. That represents what the card can do if you choose to attack with this in any of the three phases. So my Vickers here can do nothing at all in the first phase, can kill something in the middle phase, or simply wound something in the final phase. So why would I choose to wound with it when I can kill with it? Well, if I look at my opponent's troops and see that he has something that can say kill aircraft in the uh, middle phase, I might want to keep my Vickers back. These are the difficult tactical decisions that you're going to have to make. So we're into the central phase, he's going to send something forward, and I've just been given that uh, kill badge. It means that the unit he sent forward has killed one of my units, and I have to assign that badge to somebody. Every match you play will continue in this vein. Badges will be handed out, and you will have to uh, either assign them to troops, or they will be assigned to your troops. Uh, and of course, 
finally we have the repair phase, the fourth and final phase of the game in which you can spend those factory points that you usually spend on building units on repairing existing units. Something you'll find that happens in Hearts of Iron the card game is that uh, when one player starts blocking another, uh, blocking superior forces, he'll have to spend all of his factory points on simply repairing those units while another player continues to uh, build even more and more troops. You're going to have to get clever if you don't want that to happen to you. All right, there's nothing left now but for you to dive in there with the starter decks you've got and uh, get your ass kicked a few times. And remember, if the game ever seems to be hanging, it's quite possible you just haven't clicked the uh, end turn button yet, so keep an eye out for that. Good luck, guys.